c4, uh, bishop f5, but the alternative is, okay, so queen f3 check, king g7, c3, queen e5 check, king to g1, bishop to g7, attacking his pawn, c4, and now, you know, uh, this bishop still has some activity. So it's not the best. Like this bishop back here, at this this one instance right here, it's being blocked by its own queen, by its own pawn. The king is not really safe. It's already on this, you know, this last uh, file. There we go, file. I was like, file rank. So, but it's the last file, and so you really want your king towards the center. So, um, so after king h2, king f8, c4, bishop to f5. So now our bishop is a lot more active. And we're just controlling all these scores. Hey, we're even threatening, you know, bishop to b1 and then bishop to a2 and then just taking all these pawns. And why? Because all these pawns are all these scores. You know, it just goes about reason that if we take up the two queens, queen, uh, bishop b1, and then take the take, take, take. So that's the idea. Um, and so, now my plays g4. Why not? Well, there, you know, you guys know why not. It puts yet another piece or another pawn on light squares. And you don't want it on light squares. You want it on dark squares. Um, and so, you know, basically our bishop, is, this bishop here is going to get for a lot weaker, a lot weaker. You know, g3, h4, and then bishop h3. You know, g3, h4, and then bishop h3. Maybe try the bishops. Maybe, um, because, you know, you just want to get more active. And notice that difference between this structure versus this structure. So, you know, g4, it does set in peace, but, you know, it is a bishop. It can move. It's not like it's stuck for there ever. So now, bishop to b1, a3. So we've got two squares on dark squares. And now the c4 is a backwards pawn. And bishop b1, we can probably play um, towards um, attacking bishop a2 in the future. But why not restrict uh, white further by playing bishop to e4? So, I mean, like, after bishop b1, uh, b3, it's like, well, great. You just put everything on white squares. I'll just trade off the queens and then take all your pawns. Thank you. You know, so <laughs> definitely uh, b3, queen 5 check, and if you know, queen takes c5, d takes c5, you know, uh, a3, then bishop c2, b4, c takes b4, c takes b4, a takes b4, a5. And this is, you know, it looks like you're going to win. Uh, white or black is going to win, maybe. But now, c5. And this is actually going to lose, because now after... Um, all these are basically... These uh, connected pass pawns on white is a lot stronger. Um, and so you got to be careful about these pawn breakthroughs. There is a 4-3 majority here. And so you gotta be careful when you do like queen trades and stuff. So there should be one. A three. So finally getting things on dark square. There should be E four. Thirteen queen five check and then maybe some discovery. Um King G three. Queen five check. King F two. Queen F four check. Yeah. Queen G seven. Queen D two. Is a queen trade? E5, turning this pawn, and C3. And now we finally are able to trade the queens. However, oh, there, there's the queens. I just I just took them off. See? So, yeah, now, now the difference is white has, black has a better bishop. These pawns are stuck. On white squares, uh, these pawns are going to hang anyways. 
And now these pawns, we can play maybe g5 after this, which is probably the winning idea. I don't think it's necessary, but I think it is. Let's see here. After b, yep. So b takes c3, g5. And so this one pawn move, we don't even have to push this pawn, h7. This one pawn move stops two pawns. Notice that he can't push h4 because it's gonna take, and then we can win g4 just by putting our king over. So this g5 move is very, very strong. We're putting one more pawn on dark squares. So now, what? King of two, king of six, basically we're trying to get towards the center, and now you know e5 is like a very good square. King e3, king e5, which should be two. Um, ew, I had this whole pawn structure here I can probably take. Uh, so, bishop c2. Um, bishop g2 doesn't work because of bishop f2 takes and trapped. So, I mean, you have a superior position, but don't rush things. Calculate things out, and this is more in-game. Calculate things out, don't rush in-game. Um, yeah, it's a free pawn, but, you know, these pawns are not going to go anywhere, anytime soon. So, bishop b2, bishop c2, king d2, bishop b1, um, king e3, h6, putting the last pawn on dark squares. Um, so that makes sense. Bishop f3, bishop c2. So this bishop is stuck protecting this pawn on uh, c4. So bishop e2, and now a6. And so we want to play at b5 and destroy this pawn on c4, and then win on d5. So this a6 move, Frankie, uh, which is a good idea, but not at the right time. So now, since everything's position is locked up, white's bishop is terrible, we can now play a6, b5, pawn push, which makes a lot more sense now, because we're now we can actually win the pawn d5. Uh, and also, you know, how many pawns does white have? One, two, three. How many pawns does black have? One, two. And so, here, you know, uh, black has better pawn structure, better end game, better superior piece, it should be a win. So now, after a6, uh, king b2, bishop a4, so now b5 is coming, king e3, b5, c takes b5, a takes b5, bishop f3, guarding this uh, d5 pawn. Um, so now what? Bishop b3, bishop b2, Bishop c4, b takes c4, wait, 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 one second, yeah, this doesn't look great, uh, bishop b3, bishop b2, bishop c4, b takes c4, a takes b4, never mind, it is right, <laughs> and the reason why, I thought this pawn was like going to be like, you know, going like, two squares, two squares, queen! Um, after this, king takes it, that's their 8 4, then simply take here, take, and now we stop this pawn. And definitely this this, this king is within um, the pawn reach. And so, yeah. So I have to bishop c4, let's see here. So let me start here. b5, c takes b5. C takes b5, a takes b5, bishop f3, um, right the pawn, bishop b3, uh, bishop b2, bishop c4, take, take, a4, king takes c5, a5, king c6, king e4, maybe try to get some kingside pawns here. Uh, d5 check, king e5, d4 check, d takes e4, and yeah, now c3, so we're only two squares away from queen, um, we don't take back, and it's a lot of king to, you know, get over here, uh, c3, d4 
check, CB7, A6, C2, A7, Queen, uh, C1 equals Queen, A8 equals Queen. Uh oh, both have Queens, both have, uh, both have, you know, a pawn, pass pawn, white pawn's a little bit more advanced, King's also there. But unfortunately, this game ends a little bit too short for white to implement anything. Like queen c6 check, queen c6 check. After playing queen f4, checkmate. Can't go there, 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 and can't take the queen. And so that's checkmate. Um, so this one really demonstrated, um, you know, what, what bishop endgame. And so, I mean, I'll be covering probably a little bit more Bishop Bang games in a different video. Um, the emphasis here is not the rush of um, the end game. You know, it's more of taking your time, putting all almost all your pieces. Black actually did that. Putting all of your pieces on the opposite color of your bishop. So in this case, there was a light square bishop, and all the pawns and all the pieces were on dark squares, and we trade off the rooks to eliminate any mating attack from you know, any counterplay uh, from white. And we also found that, you know, we don't trade off the queens because it wasn't a completely won in game. Not until after we fixated all the pawns on a light squares for white. And so in that one instance, once we've done that and have our bishop on active squares, our king in, you know, proper position, then and only then we trade off the queens, or no, excuse me, we trade off the queens, and then we can have a bishop endgame where we started to attack the weakness. Um, white had three connected, or white had three pawn islands. Um, black had only two, and there were very nice long pawn chains on dark squares. And then we pushed simply, you know, when the endgame right here, the, you know, just attacking at the c4 pawn base. Take a take, you know, and just winning this d5 pawn by force. And this is called pawn breakthrough. So if he doesn't take, then we have d3, d2, d1. And so take a take, check. All right, so that's the last position. Any question on this one? Any questions on this puzzle? Or, you know, Bishop in the, I guess this is Bishop in the end game. But, um, you know, we, we kind of transition from the middle game to the end game. Um, let's start from the very beginning. Trade off the rooks. That bishop, uh, no rook f1. So, here, put the queen active. Keep the queens on the board. And then start attacking these pawns so that they are on light squares. So, I know that. So, he didn't play that. Um, so after this, we can be four check there. Whoa, one second. Um, can be four check. King h2, king f8 to block in, you know, any queen e7 or queen e8 tower play. Um, c4, bishop f5, g4. You know, yay, we're attacking the bishop, but we're putting one more pawn on light squares, which is not the idea. Um, should be one, just provoking any ideas here. A3, bishop C, uh, e4, controlling, and queen e5 check. Uh, coming up, repositioning all pieces. Queen trade, no queen trade yet. And now, after, you know, here, if queen c3, now we doubled up, white has doubled up the pawns. These pawns are not going to go anywhere. We fixate this pawn structure for white. And now the bishop here is more active than this bishop here. Um, and so, g5 to, you know, walk in these bishop or these pawns on the king side, on my squares. Um, and so, a g5, uh, and, you know, king f2, going, rushing towards the uh, center with the kings. And this is a lot of zips long, you know, and this is now a6 idea. You know, 
going for the seafoot pun 